Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Uh, today we're doing something awesome. Uh, we're building this one's first gaming PC. Uh, well, just PC in general, really. Um, so, let's go ahead and do that. Yay! Alright, so, uh, quick overview of the parts, because I know this one is absolutely bustling to get it built. Um, I'm standing in the way, but... Uh, I'm just gonna go over a quick list. Um, the budget was roughly a thousand Australian dollars, uh, so a bit tight. Uh, it's quite difficult to get that done in Australia, but we did it. Um, so, uh, starting from the top with the CPU, we're looking at a Ryzen 3 uh, 1200. Uh, we're banking on a nice overclock with that guy. We've got a uh, Hyper TX3 uh, to cover off the overclock. Um, we're going with a B350 motherboard because a um, couple of reasons. We wanted to have a future, like we we need it for overclocking, but we also wanted to have a future-proof board that could be that can handle like a Ryzen 7 and things when you, you upgrade them over time. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have 16 gig DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. Uh, was because of RAM pricing, that was the cheapest I could get um, with the highest speed I could get with the budget. So unfortunately, that's all we could get. Uh, we also have a GTX 1050 Ti. Now the reason why we've got a 1050 Ti again is graphics card pricing is insane, um, but it's a good entry level card. It'll do the job for pretty much any modern game, um, medium to high settings, 1080p. Um, in terms of storage, we're looking at a 120 gig Fury X, just a SSD, pretty basic. Two terabyte hard drive for the games and everything else. Uh, and power supply. Now, spent a little bit of extra money on this. Uh, this is something that you might want to do yourself. And the reason for this is it is overkill for this build, uh, but it can handle anything up to a 1080 Ti. So when this one wants to upgrade in the future, doesn't have to upgrade the power supply, it's good to go. Uh, it's Cougar VTX 600 for those who don't know. So 600 watts, um, reasonably good for pretty much any build. Uh, and we have a Silverstone RL05 for the case. So, you ready to build it? Yeah. All right, let's do let's it. Let's do it. Alright guys, so we've finished the build now, as you can see in the B-roll. Uh, we are going to bench benchmark the machine uh, after the fact, um, but we haven't actually tried to turn it on. So, uh, it is uh, his first build. Now, this is my little brother, uh, for those of you who don't know. Um, he's never built a computer before, and he wanted to build one, and I was kind of told that, hey, you know, help him do it. So, I kind of watched him do it. I think I only did a little bit in the end. Didn't really do much. Yeah. Just the wiring, really. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just cable tidying and the, the tedious stuff that 
just takes time. Yeah. Um, so, without further ado, let's uh, see it turns on. So, go nuts. That's on HDMI? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right. Hope so. <laughs> Hopefully this works. Just looking on the screen over there, guys. Alright guys, so we've got a power on now, uh, it still needs windows put on it, uh, but we will sort that out off camera. Um, what I did do before bringing down all the parts, uh, I wanted to test them because for me it was uh, like a four or five hour drive to bring all the, everything down, so uh, it would be a pain to RMA things, which means I have some benchmarks for you guys, I've run the full suite that I've normally done, um, I've actually compared it to my Ryzen build that I normally use, I haven't told you this, this is the first time I'm telling you. Um, I've also compared it to a bit of an older second-hand build that I had lying around, just for a reference point. Uh, I'll also cover over a bit of why we kind of did the build, um, the way we did it with the budget we had it, why I picked the parts. Some people would have gone, why didn't you go with Intel, why didn't you pick different parts? There are reasons behind that. Um, I will explain that now as a part of the benchmark run. First up we're going to have Doom, uh, and it's a bit of a difference between the two. Um, so bearing in mind as well that the Ryzen 7 uh, it is overclocked, uh, as is the Ryzen 3, but uh, more importantly, the Ryzen 7 actually has a RX 480. Uh, now, the Ryzen 3, I don't think would bottleneck an RX 480. I think it would come close to pushing an RX 480 to its limits. Uh, there would be some bottlenecking, but ultimately, uh, you wouldn't really see a whole lot of difference if it was running the RX 480. However, the most important thing in this comparison is we're comparing a uh, computer that costs a thousand dollars to my build which costs in excess of two thousand dollars. So uh, as you can see here there is definitely no scaling uh, and it kind of demonstrates you don't really need to spend a lot of money to get a good gaming experience. Uh, bearing in mind that every single one of these benchmarks was done at the highest possible preset for that game. Um, as you can see, Doom, uh, we managed to break over the, the 60 frames per second average. Uh, remembering again, I don't use maximum uh, frame rates, I only use the average, the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows. Uh, and as you can see, at no point did it become unplayable. Uh, it ran quite smoothly. And overall, in general, I mean, it, it's a slight noticeable difference between my Ryzen 7 system, but given the cost, uh, honestly, there's no comparison. Moving next to Crisis 3, uh, we see that it's a lot closer, um, tw uh, 38 average versus 27. Now Crisis 3 on Ultra with that 1050 Ti, uh, it's unplayable uh, in most instances. It does, the frame rate drops quite a fair, quite a bit, um, but Crisis 3 is quite a demanding game and as you can see even the RX 480 struggled in this title. Moving next to F1 2015 and this is this is a pretty important benchmark for CPUs. Uh, I found that it is not as sensitive to graphics cards as it is to CPUs. So um, in the past I've paired uh, Q6600s which is a really really old Core 2 Quad, about a 10 year old processor now. Uh, I've actually compared uh, tr like paired that with an RX 480 in some testing and I've found that even with the RX 480 it, it, it can't run the game. Um, i5 second and third gen also struggle. So being able to see uh, that F1 2015 with a 1050 Ti and a Ryzen 3 uh, was able to be maxed out with the settings was quite impressive for that title as it is quite demanding on resources. Moving on from there we're going to go to uh, GTA 5 and this is again a pretty close matchup. Uh, and this game is pretty harsh on Ryzen CPUs in general. They don't the architecture doesn't handle this game well uh, And that can be partly due to the fact that GTA 5 was designed Long before Ryzen was even conceived it was it was a game that was developed over four years ago And the Ryzen architecture was nowhere near uh, even a, even a thought in anyone's head at that point. So um, It's good to see that the Ryzen 3 does keep pace with the Ryzen 7 and again It shows that at 1080p Ultra for a thousand bucks you can have a pretty good experience uh, moving next to Battlefield 1 uh, This is a game that does like CPU uh, 
Um, it also does like graphics cards, so it does scale well. And as you can see here, uh, the RX 480 paired with the Ryzen 7 uh, absolutely crushes in this title. And the with the 1050 uh, Ti, uh, it does drop off in the Ryzen 3. At times it get, does get a little stuttery, but again, we're running on ultra settings. And the fact that we can maintain a, a 63 average frame is pretty impressive for that game. Uh, next up is Watch Dogs 2, and this is possibly the most taxing benchmark I run. Uh, this game will show up weaknesses in CPUs if there is one. And as you can see here, the um, the CPU makes a large difference. The graphics card can influence that. But as you can see, the frame rate dropping down to 5 on the Ryzen 3, uh, that, that indicates to me that the CPU was actually bottlenecking the graphics card. And that's more to do with this game. And again, if the settings were dropped from the maximums down to a medium or even a high, uh, the frame rate becomes immediately playable. So it's more about demonstrating what the card can do under extreme pressure rather than the fact that it can game at 1080p, which it can do very well. Um, 1050 Ti, fantastic entry level card. Finally, we move to Dirt Rally, and this is a fantastic game for benchmarking again. Uh, not a whole lot of difference, so this game appears to like CPU um, more than anything, but overall, yeah, it was a pretty tight battle between the two, um, and overall demonstrated that, again, the $1,000 system is absolutely fantastic price to performance for gaming. Next, we move to synthetics. We've got Unigen Valley. And with Unigen Valley, it's a benchmark that is not influenced by CPU at all. Um, I've only seen very extreme cases where it's a really low-end CPU that it's actually influenced the result. And as you can see here, the uh, RX 480 paired with the Ryzen 7 absolutely runs away with it. And uh, the 1050 Ti, this is where you start to see the um, performance difference uh, quite significant um, in that benchmark. Next we move to Cinebench R15 and this is completely and utterly unfair on the uh, Ryzen 3, this comparison. Uh, Ryzen 7 crushes it, but again this is a multi-threaded test and you know, no 4-core is ever going to stand up to an 8-core 16-thread CPU, it's just not going to happen. So um, that 573 score, that's pretty good. Uh, you'll see most i3s getting around that, and some i5s will also be around that mark. So it's a pretty respectable multi-core score, um, and overall I'm pretty happy with that for a, for a budget uh, entry-level system. That's that's pretty good. Finally, we move to the Ryzen Blender test. Again, CPU bound. Uh, it's a render test, and as you can see, the Ryzen 7 just runs away with this test again. Uh, halving the score uh, and sorry halving the amount of time it took to run versus the uh, Ryzen 3. So uh, that is the benchmarks um, and this video is getting quite long uh, but I also did promise I would explain why I chose the parts that I chose and the consideration a lot of people forget is if you're spending a thousand dollars on a system there's a good chance that you're going to want to be able to upgrade it down the line when you when you have more money so I remember when I started out in computers I, I did that I, I had an entry-level system this is this is going back nearly 10 years now and I upgraded my system over time now uh, knowing what I know now I wish I, I wish I had have had the knowledge I have now back then uh, because uh, with this system I've, I've put a bit of money into the into the RAM I put a bit of money into the motherboard and uh, all the supporting components. The components we actually took budget away from was the CPU and the graphics card. Uh, so I could have gone the other way and just put in a, a kick-ass graphics card and, and suffer the CPU or put in a good CPU. Uh, not take anything away from the Ryzen 3 because it is a good CPU. Um, but I could have put it in a slightly better one, maybe a Ryzen 5, uh, and bump the performance a little bit. But um, the logic behind choosing a lower end CPU and a lower end graphics card, putting the money into the rest of the parts, is this system can handle the top spec Ryzen 7. Um, so the Ryzen 7 1800X, which is a $700 CPU. Um, that is fantastic scaling. Uh, so if you think about it, the Ryzen 7's in a year or two when the Ryzen 3 is no longer able to cut the mustard. Those Ryzen 7s on the second hand market are going to be super cheap. You can drop it straight in this system uh, and you'll have fantastic performance. So um, with the graphics card as well, graphics cards don't age well, I can tell you that. 
my RX 480. Um, I've had it for about nine months. I can guarantee in less than two years that's going to need an upgrade. So um, it makes little sense to spend a lot of money on a graphics card. Um, I'd, I would rather put the money into building up the rest of the components, specifically the power supply, which is why I also put a lot of money in the power supply, is because it will all, that power supply will also handle a high-end, like a 1080 Ti. Um, so, in essence, this system is ready to be upgraded to whatever my little brother wants, and that is the reason why I chose the parts I chose. Um, I 100% recommend going down this path for anyone building a brand new system, because um, the other consideration is the AM4 platform itself is uh, AMD has guaranteed compatibility until 2020 with that socket. So unlike uh, what Intel does where they generally force you to buy a new motherboard with every release of a CPU generation, um, has normally they do two CPU generations on the one socket, but there's not a lot of performance increase. Uh, AMD has never done that. They've always been known for long-term support. They've done this with AM3, AM2. Um, they've always supported their sockets for a very long time. Um, I don't know historically going back further than that, but in the last 10 years, they've maintained the same socket for a long time. And that means that a Ryzen 3 could be still on AM4. So um, it's really worth considering these options when you're building a system because it means when you want to upgrade, instead of spending uh, $700 on an upgrade, you can spend $400 and get the same result. So um, that's the logic behind the parts. Um, and sorry if this has been a bit of a long video, but I, I kind of felt that uh, it kind of deserves it because it's a bit of a two-parter. Uh, we've done the build. I've explained why it's been built this way. I've shown the benchmarks. Uh, so thanks for watching guys. Uh, like this one if you've liked it. Dislike it if you've disliked it. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have anything to add. And also uh, one thing I want to mention is uh, Techverb has now got a forum. Uh, we also have a website. I'll uh, put links down in the description. Uh, I, I'm hoping to build up this forum over time. And ultimately, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to build a community um, for for my viewers and I'd, I'd really want to interact with you guys and I find that's the best way to do it. So um, thanks for watching guys and I will catch you in the next video.